Welcome to another video of STAT 420. In this video, we're going to talk about the least squares approach to finding a line of best fit. So in the previous video, we talked about um, the idea of a linear model being one of our options for um, defining the relationship between two numeric variables. Uh, but we didn't talk about how we um, know which line really is the best fitting line for that relationship. Um, so if I go back to um, uh, this picture back here, um, obviously we fit a line, um, but there's obviously a lot of different lines that I could reasonably fit. So the question remains, how do I know that, that this line really is the best fitting line and not something that's, say, a little bit less steep or a little bit more steep or maybe even anchored somewhere a little bit different? So the least squares method would be one kind of strategy towards finding a line of best fit. And so the strategy here is to minimize the sum of the squared residuals to the smallest amount possible. So residual, by the way, is going to be this vertical distance between a particular data point and the line of best fit. So it's how much error we have in our prediction if we're using the line to try to predict what y is going to be given a particular x value. So um, you'll notice that some of these residuals are going to be positive and some are going to be negative depending on whether the point is above or below the line. Um, and so what we can do here is we can um, find the squared residuals because that's going to be a positive value. So a lot of times statisticians like to square things because that will make things positive when otherwise it's a mixture of positive and negative things. So if we want to minimize the um, some of the positive or some of the squared residuals, we can find a line uh, that is arguably going to be the best fitting line for this relationship. So how do we find the parameters that do that? So, so we can use some calculus here to find the parameters that are going to minimize the sum of the squared residuals to um, the smallest possible value. I'm just realizing that my title is a little bit confusing. That minimizes the least squares. But really what I mean is minimizes the sum of squares or sum of squares residuals, which would be the line that is creating the least squares um, residual error there. Okay, so if I think about um, the, the sum of squares residuals in terms of a function, it's a function um, with beta naught and beta one as parameters. And so it's going to be represented by each of my y values subtracted by um, my best estimate, so the point on the line at that given x point. Um, so I'm going to find that difference between my actual observed value and my predicted value. I'm going to square that difference, and I'm going to sum all of these squared differences up. Um, all right. So um, to find the beta naught and beta one that minimizes this function to the smallest possible value, what I'm gonna do is take the derivative of this function and I'm going to set that derivative equal to zero to find a local minimum or maximum. Now, we're not really gonna get into knowing, well, how do we know it's the local minimum and not the local maximum? Um, there's more derivation that we're not gonna worry about. Um, we can just trust that if we, if we did that, we would find that um, setting this derivative equal to zero is finding the local minimum in this case. Um, so we're not going to really cover the calculus, but um, the derivative um, involves the chain rule, lowering the exponent as well as multiplying by the derivative of beta, um, beta naught, which is negative, or beta one, which is negative, to get each of these different possibilities. Um, so again, we're going to set those equal to zero, and then we're going to solve the equation for each parameter. Now, um, the strategy um, for each of these is a little bit different. So I'm going to actually do beta naught here um, because that was a little bit simpler to do, and I'm going to wind up with an equation in terms of beta one. So if I take this equation right here and I isolate beta naught, I'm going to get n um, beta hat naught. So my estimate for beta naught is going to be this equation sum of y sub i minus beta hat 1 sum of x sub i. And so one thing that I can do here is I can recognize, um, or actually I have one more thing that I need to do. I need to divide both sides by n. So I'm going to do that here. And now one thing that I can take advantage of is the fact that the sum of y sub i minus n is just going to be y bar. And the same thing for the sum of x sub i divided by n. That's just going to be x bar. So I can simplify this a little bit more and say that beta hat naught should be y bar 
minus beta hat one x bar. So I have um, um, a, a symbol, not what am I looking for? I have a term for um, beta hat naught, but it is in terms of beta hat one, which is kind of annoying. But now I can go back to solving for beta hat one, and I can just replace beta hat naught with this term for beta hat one. Um, so I'm not gonna do all of this, but basically what it involves is taking this term. So, so one difference between say uh, this term right here and this term right here is that I um, took a liberty and I multiplied x sub i into this term because since this is gonna be set equal to zero, I can really multiply anything in here and it's not going to actually change the expression. Multiplying um, a term by all these terms is just going to give me a different representation that makes the algebra a little bit easier. So I'm not gonna carry this out fully, um, but I will show you what, what I'm ultimately trying to do is I'm gonna replace beta hat naught with y bar minus beta hat one x bar. So I'm gonna have, let's see, y hat, oops, I'm a little bit behind my screen there. Um, you know, what I should do is I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna do it up here. So I'm gonna do, instead of beta, beta naught, I'm gonna do y bar minus beta hat one x bar times the sum of x sub i plus beta hat one sum of x sub i squared equals the sum of x sub i y sub i. Um, and so if I carry out this algebra and isolate for beta hat one, I'm going to end up, end up with an expression that looks like this, um, where the terms are going to um, uh, look like this. And one other thing is instead of having x bar and y bar, um, they've been broken out again, and so now I have the sum of x sub i over n, the sum of x sub i squared over n, et cetera. So, so again, we can get to that representation using some algebra based on um, this last term that I wrote there. Um, so one common abbreviation, so instead of writing this all out, is I could actually um, um, simplify these terms to this. So this is essentially what this is going to be. Um, and I can also simplify the, the sim symbolism here, and I can use s with an, a sub xy to represent the numerator and an s sub xx to represent the denominator. So kind of like, if you think of this as kind of being like a sum of squares term, so I have the sum of, the, of squares for x, and then I have kind of a mixed sum of squares term where I have the difference between x sub i and x bar and y sub i minus y bar multiplied together, which I represent with the s sub x, y. And so that's going to be my least squares estimate for beta hat one. All right, so what do these parameters tell us? So remember that without the hat on it, they are representing the parameters, the true relationship between these two variables. So the slope parameter beta one tells us that for every one unit increase in the x variable, we observe a beta one unit increase in the y variable on average. So again, not not always, but this term represents kind of the average rate of change for y for every one unit increase in x. The intercept term beta zero or beta naught tells us that when the x variable is equal to zero, then the average for y is beta naught. Um, one thing I'll mention in passing, because I don't know if I mentioned it before, um, whenever we use a capital um, letter, um, to talk about a variable. We're talking about just kind of the existence of the random variable where this is um, can take really any value, whereas a lowercase x is talking about like one particular value that I could plug in. So it's not a super important thing in, in this class, but we will be using that terminology here and there. So, so capital, capital letter represents the random variable. Little little um, letter, little x, whatever, is representing a specific value that we could plug in for that random variable. Uh, but also keep in mind that with beta naught and beta one, uh, we're not gonna know those parameters with only a sample of data. So instead what we do is we're estimating them and we call our estimates beta hat naught and beta hat one. Um, and so, so those are gonna be sample statistics. They're gonna have a little bit of error in, in estimating those parameters. Um, but if we go through our least squares method with our data, we're going to be calculating beta hat naught and beta hat one that we hope are reasonable estimates of beta naught and beta one. So one slight difference in interpretation here is um, when we're interpreting our sample statistics, 
then we're saying, uh, in, in the case of beta hat 1, that for every one unit increase in the x variable, we estimate a beta hat 1 unit increase in the y variable on average. So we're estimating what that average rate of change is instead of just saying this is the average rate of change. The intercept term, again, a small difference. So instead of just saying the average for y at that point, we're saying it's the estimated average for y when x equals 0. Um, so, so just make sure that we're clear that these are estimates, whereas the others are actual parameters representing um, what, these, what these values are going to be.